Howdy folks, Lex here, Latasha there, this is our son Dexter, and we have a movie haul for you tonight. Um, we promised him that he could show off his free movies that he got at the pawn shop before he went to bed, so he's going to show them off right here. Show him what you got, Dexter. So, I got Russell Madness here. Have you seen that one before? Yeah, it's also on Netflix, but it does have some special features on it. Okay. You like of that course. one? Of uh, course. It's a good movie. And what's it about? It's about a wrestling dog with a <laughs> monkey companion. That's pretty silly. All right, yeah. what's your next one? Here's my next movie, Ramona and Beezus. Yeah, what's this about? Well, there are some Ramona books written by Beverly Clary. Okay. And it's this about... This is about one of those books? Yep. Okay. In you you fact, like this one? Yeah, I think it's actually mostly based on Ramona's world. Okay. So, those two uh, Blu-rays you got for free, right? Mm-hmm. Who gave them to you? Well, some people at the Gold Exchange let me get these free as Blu-rays, and they usually give out DVD. Pretty cool. All right, say goodbye. Bye. So uh, we actually got a pretty big haul this time around and she's in the video this time around because she got uh, quite a bit of stuff. Yes, and uh, we have a pawn shop in town that sells Blu-rays for $3 a piece. Um, doesn't matter, brand new, doesn't matter how old they are, $3. Uh, so I went and picked up three because I, I kind of figured like three Blu-rays every other week comes out to like nine bucks and some change. It's pretty good to build a library at a steady pace or whatever. Uh, I decided to pick up Gentleman Broncos, which is a Jared and Jerusha Hess film uh, from the creators of Napoleon Dynamite, as you can tell by the artwork. Uh, this is a movie they did in 2009, I believe. So a couple years after Napoleon Dynamite. Um, it's kind of got a very similar sense of humor uh, but more outrageous, more surreal, you know, just kind of full board um, craziness. I don't like it as much as Napoleon Dynamite because it's not as reined in as Napoleon is. But I do have to also say that I personally didn't like the first viewing of Napoleon Dynamite. It grew on me, so I wonder if this would be like that the more you watch it, the more you enjoy it. But Maybe. yeah, I did I enjoy wasn't... it. I enjoyed it. It was um, weird. <laughs> it was weird. I did enjoy a lot of his humor. Some of it I did not care for. Um, so it's kind of in the middle for me. But uh, Gentleman Broncos, again, that was a blind buy. I'd never seen it before, but I'd heard about it. Um, and it was just it's just one of those things you don't see very often, so I decided to grab it. At least I don't see it very often. And then I also decided to pick up uh, Do the Right Thing from Spike Lee, one of his early movies. And as many would say, one of his best. I actually watched this last night. Um, the transfer is very good, especially for a film from, you know, 1989. Uh, but a very intense film. This is kind of like a master class on atmosphere and camera work and uh, characters and stuff like that. So I uh, really like this film, but it's not for everybody, that's for sure. And then finally, I picked this up. John Carpenter's The Thing. Uh, this is an older Blu-ray. This I think it's from 2008 or something like that. Um, this uh, very good transfer. There are a couple shots that are really bad. Like they didn't transfer very well at all. I think that's just the way it was filmed. Um, they shot outdoors and stuff like that. So this film has a bunch of crazy um, you know, practical effects. I don't want to say special effects. But practical effects. Some of the best practical effects in any horror movie. It's just nuts, and of course, uh, some great actors in this, Kurt Russell, uh, Wilford Brimley, Keith David, and on and on and on and on. Very, very, very good movie, and it was still sealed. It was brand new in the packaging, never been opened before, so decided to grab that one. Then we were at Walmart over the weekend. We live in a small town, so Walmart is pretty much our go-to for everything. And they have their five dollar movie bins, and they're like three seventy four, whatever the price <laughs> they're is. They're all weird prices. There's like three seventy four, five dollars, and seven eighty eight. Yeah, so why not? And I like the Hunger Games movies, 
I own the first, second, and third, and by third I mean part one of Mockingjay, but I don't own part two. I was kind of hoping that they would come out with one and two combined in a cool set or whatever, but I needed to buy it, so I went ahead and picked it up for $7.88, and it comes with the digital copy, which I've mentioned before is something that I really like because I can load it onto... Um, my tablet, my phone, whatever, and be able to watch it anywhere. So I finally picked this up a couple years late. And this is one of those uh, films that I guess she said because it's newer. I don't know when it came out, but you never, you don't really see it around, or we don't see it around at the used places like right. Goodwill or the pawn shop or whatever. So, uh, in fact, this was the only one in the store we could find. Uh, so obviously, for some reason, it's kind of elusive. Uh, to find, but we we were able to get it and complete her collection for seven eighty eight. So we pulled the trigger. I will say also though on the Walmart website it shows that this movie comes as the Blu Ray DVD and digital for seven eighty eight, and we couldn't find that particular copy. So I went ahead and just you know took it like this with just the Blu Ray and the digital. I can do without the DVD because I'm gonna mostly watch it as a digital copy anyway. So it still worked out in my favor. Yeah. I don't know how prevalent Dollar General stores are across the U.S. Pretty prevalent. Okay. We just recently <laughs> got two in our town. There's one yeah. larger one and one smaller We're one. a small town, too. So. Yeah, so that's really bizarre. But um, he had gone in there and noticed that they had quite a few Blu-rays listed for $5. So we all went in to check it out. And I picked up Jupiter Ascending. This is a movie that didn't get a lot of great reviews from the critics, but I like it. I like sci-fi stuff, and, you know, the plot is weird, and that's right up my alley. So I went ahead and picked this up. And then I also saw this, Mirror Mirror. It's, you know, there's millions of takes on the Snow White, um, you know. Tail. Tail, yeah, thank you. And this is just, you know, a good one. So, again, for $5, this coming with the Blu-ray DVD and digital is pretty awesome. This is just the Blu-ray. There's no digital with it, so that's kind of lame. But, yeah. you know, it works. So, two movies for 10 bucks, Not bad. Not bad. So, check out your Dollar General. I'm sure it's going to be different. I actually saw a couple of movies that I was kind of on the fence about, like, I don't know what it is. Like, $5 to me is just, like, that's too much sometimes. And it's like if it was if the if these were three dollars or four dollars, I would probably Which get it. Which is so but. bizarre that people have that thing <clears throat> with five dollars because you can go to a coffee shop and spend seven dollars on a cup of coffee these days. Right. But five dollars for a movie that's going to last you yeah, forever exactly. too much. But they were uh, Austin Powers, International Man of Mystery, uh, and the uh, uh, Mean Streets from Scorsese. Like I, I does. Kind of like, I'll pick up Mean Streets. I've never seen Mean Streets before. Uh, I've always wanted to, but I've never found it on a streaming site at the right time. Um, and I didn't want to, I didn't, for some reason, I didn't want to blind buy it in case I really, really liked it. And they came out with a bigger collection, not collection, but like a, a collector's edition later on or something. You know, I don't know. I, I could always sell it for $5, I'm sure. But for some reason, I couldn't pull the trigger. But anyway... We went back today to the pawn shop and uh, $3 of Blu-ray, so we picked up some more. Because I and, did not uh, go on the first trip that you went on, right, so I exactly. hadn't had a chance to check everything out just yet. Me. So. I told her about some things that I thought maybe she'd be interested in and all that stuff. They have such a huge collection. I'll try to get some footage in there. I took some footage with my cell phone, uh, with my iPhone, but I don't think... I don't know. I, I, I have trouble getting footage from my iPhone onto the computer and all that kind of stuff. And it's like up and down, that kind of format. So we'll see. If, if I can get it on there, you'll see it now. If not, oh well. Um, but I picked, my first pick was uh, The Revenant. This is a blind buy. I haven't seen this yet. I've wanted to see it. Um, of course, I've said in another video that uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is one of my favorite actors. Uh, this is all about him stranded in the wilderness, I guess. Um, and there's a bear involved. Uh, that much I know. It came with the digital code, too. I don't know if the digital code has been used or not, but it comes with it. And supposedly this looks really, really good on Blu-ray, and there's a 4K Blu-ray out there, too. Uh, but, yeah, this was kind of like... 
I haven't seen it, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to like it to some extent, so I, I got it for three bucks. Why not? I grabbed quite a few myself. I have Let's to say, one at a time. I'm actually annoyed by this part, though. Yeah, this so, is... We went through our whole DVD collection and made notes of which ones we wanted to upgrade to Blu-ray. I have the Matrix movies on DVD and said I wouldn't mind having those as, you know, Blu-rays. So, awesome. And then, even better, two in one. Perfect, because between these two, I can have all three movies. What the pawn shop does is they just put a piece of tape over. You can still see. And yeah, you can still see that it's Maybe. on there. Only one disc, so. What the F? <laughs> it, I'm it, annoyed. And I get it, it was $3. Yeah, it was 3 bucks. But honestly, I wasn't going to buy them individually and spend $9 when I know that at some point right. I can buy all three of them brand new for 10 Yeah. Because there's going to be a set if there's not one already. So I'm really frustrated and annoyed by that. So even though, again, it was only $3, I am going to go take this in and say... So you're going to return the first one, too, or are you going to yeah, keep I'm that? Yeah, I'm going to return all of them. That, or return that. Yeah, okay. because, like, who does that? Or at least make some sort of note, have a sticky note or a piece of tape or something that says only one movie is in there. Yeah. And it's... And, of course, it's the third one that's there, the second one missing. So it... <laughs> so, yeah. So, Matrix, but we're Otherwise, not gonna, it would have been a great buy. Three them. movies for $6, $2 a movie, that would have right. been great. So, I do have a question. Do you have anything in your mind that you want to replace them with that you saw there that you maybe left on the shelf? Yes. What's that? So, similar to wanting these, um, we have two of the three Batman movies on Blu-ray already. So I want Batman Begins on Blu-ray to round out the collection. Well, they had the trilogy there, all three of those movies, in this nice... I mean, it was a little bit beat up, but this nice little box set thing going on. Yeah. And it wasn't labeled a different price, so I'm assuming that it was also only three bucks. So even though we have two of the movies already, if that one is truly $3... It's worth it because I can turn around and sell the other two movies and, you know, make a profit, essentially. Yeah. So, return these and get that instead is kind of what I'm envisioning. Gotcha. All right. Um, next up, um, I guess I'll go, I'll go through all these together. Goo, 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 goo. Goo, goo, gaga. All right. Uh, first up is Alien. Um I've been watching through these movies on HBO, on demand, <clears throat> and I got up to Resurrection, which is the fourth movie in the series, as I'm sure most of you know, um, and it was time to watch... I didn't want to watch the Alien vs. Predators. Uh, it was time to go to Prometheus, and they don't, they don't have Prometheus on HBO for some reason, so it's weird, um, but I really like this movie. Uh, this is probably my favorite of the series. Um, I haven't watched the newer ones yet, so I can't really you know, speak on those. Uh, but of the original four, this is my favorite. It just has a nice atmosphere. It's the most horror-centric out of all four of them. Um, but I really like how this is shot. It has some really great shots in it, and I'm excited to see how it looks on Blu-ray. Plus, um, this also has the uh, 79 theatrical re version and the 2003 director's cut. Plus you know, commentary and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so decided to get that. And then they also had Aliens. Um, I don't really like this movie very much, <laughs> but I bought it just to, I guess, complete the series. It's not bad. But I had to convince you to buy those. Yeah, it's it's not bad. Like Alien, you know, I, I, I put it back on the shelf, but when it was time to be like, I didn't find anything else, I was definitely... Good to grab this. This right here, it, it's got some nice visuals in it. It's got some nice colors and stuff like that. Of course, it's directed by James Cameron. Um, you know, that kind of kicked off his big blockbuster career and everything. Uh, but it, this is an action movie, and it's really corny, uh, in my opinion. I just... it It's okay. It's not a bad movie, but it's just... It's more action centric and um, but this time it's war yes exactly so aliens i know some people this is some people's favorite in the series and whatnot not necessarily mine so there's that and then they also had and i was happy to see this because again 
wasn't on HBO for some reason. It's Prometheus. Um, and it's, it's pro produced by 20th Century Fox, too, so I don't know why it wasn't on there. Um, I guess they had a separate licensing deal for it and everything like this. But I'm excited to see this because I've actually been wanting to see this since it released. And I just never got around to it. And here it is right now. But I'm intrigued that this is the prequel to Alien and um, going through all that. I've heard this has some really great visuals as well. So I'm excited to get to that. And that kind of starts my Alien collection because I've never owned any Alien film before that. So... This is, as you were calling it, a blind buy, if you will, because I haven't seen it yet, but Paper Towns. This is a book movie, and I really like the author of this book, so I figured I would like the movie. I have seen um, The Fault in Our Stars, which is also a book movie from the same author, and I liked that, so I'm hopeful for this, and... Uh, this What's is interesting cool. is that, I mean, this movie is fairly new. It came out in 2015, but the the case comes with, like, all of the little extras that the movie came with are still in here. So there's this little pad of sticky notes, and they have different quotes on there. So, I mean, that's kind of cool, because that's actually practical. And then these cool little stickers, they look like little push pins right. for... Hold them up. Should Want to go here. and been there. So that's maybe, cool. Maybe not. <laughs> and then we haven't tried it out yet, but it does show digital um, the digital code being in there. So I guess we'll see if it actually works. I would hope so, because I would think that if you are like selling a movie that you have, giving it to a place to turn on and sell, whatever it may be, that you would not include a used digital code i know i personally take uh, them out of the I case when i, I use put them, them right back in there because so. i like to keep i like to keep all the original stuff in the case so if i was getting getting rid of my blu-rays and pawning them off because i needed money i probably wouldn't care that's just me i guess but but as the person buying the get, pawn yeah, movie that saying. would tick me off so we will see if the digital code is in there but blu-ray dvd digital code plus these extras for three bucks not bad Right, exactly. So I only have one more left, uh, so why don't you go ahead and get some other ones in there. Okay. As I mentioned in another video, I am a big fan of the Resident Evil movies, and while going through our collection, I have two of the movies on DVD and two that are Blu-ray, so when I saw this, I had to pick it up. Okay, how many movies are there? I don't know. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> so uh one thing More i will than say five <laughs> one thing i will say about this i thought this was an older movie i mean the final chapter obviously says that it's not be but if you look at this it's got one of those um what's this called uh, oh i didn't notice that yeah the little click thing here where you open it and these are usually i think i thought at least these were usually with older cases but uh, these are really frustrating because it's just one more extra thing that you have to do or whatever. Uh, but you haven't seen this yet, right? Um, yeah, I have. She has. Okay. So it wasn't a blind buy or anything mm -mm. just to add to the collection. Plus it's on Blu-ray. I'm sure that you probably didn't see it on Blu-ray when you did see it. It was mm -mm. probably because a stream or something like that. This is from 2002? The movie was... Oh, wait, no. That's the original. And then Apocalypse was 04. This Extinction is was 07. This is last year. Afterlife is 10. <laughs> Retribution was 12. Okay, so we're up to 5 so far. The final chapter is 16. 16, okay. And then... Oops. Okay, so apparently they're rebooting it. There you go. Why? But it looks like I'm Milk only one cow. one movie away. <laughs> Geppetto into a saucer. Milking the cat. Yes, exactly. So, anyway, uh, speaking of uh, post-apocalyptic uh, hell, I uh, went ahead and got Mad Max Fury Road, uh, three bucks. Um, I, you know, a lot of people would say this is an instant classic, you know, which is kind of a weird 
an oxymoron in a sense, instant classic. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But, um, you know, a lot of people love this and thought it was, you know, the greatest thing that year that came out. Um, we watched it and I thought it was okay. Um, it's got a lot of cool action scenes in it. It's got a really good it's look really to it. Pretty. Very visually pleasing, which is great for Blu ray. So I was like, that's pretty much the reason I got it. It's post apocalyptic. And it looks good. I was on surprised to see it in the pile as I was looking. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that really irks me about this movie is Tom Hardy's voice. Um, it sounds like really, really bad ADR. Um, it just it sounds cheesy and just really, really bad. I don't know. I don't remember his voice. It's just like, uh, like uh, I don't know. Uh, what like, uh, get on the car. It's just, it, I don't know. It's weird. It's just like, it's just him like short grunting words out. I almost but it really it sounds. Like it doesn't of... sound like he's in the picture. It sounds like he's just commentating like he's over it. Yeah, like ADR, additional dialogue recording. So it it just I don't know. That bugs me. I interpreted me. that whole thing like they're not very intelligent. Like people. kung fu. Like it sounded like kung fu movies. What? <laughs> Like, it just, like, it wasn't even a lip-syncing thing. It was just, like, it sounded like he was in a recording booth, which he probably was, you know? I'm not saying that it wasn't now that gonna way. I'm going to want to watch, like, at least part of it tonight to see what you're talking about. I don't, yeah, this is a pretty long movie, too, I think. Uh, so I didn't say the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know where it starts or where it ends or whatever. But, it, you know, I'm, a, I'm someone who really loves special features, so uh, for that alone, should be a pretty decent buy. Final Blu-ray pickup, um, Black Swan. I don't remember where I saw this. It wasn't in the theater. I'm thinking maybe I picked it up at, like, Redbox or something and watched it. I think, I honestly don't remember, but I have seen it, and I really liked it. I really love ballet, fascinated by it. I danced a bit when I was younger. And so part of it is just, like, the fantasy of... You know, seeing people do ballet, but then also, it's just so, like, intense. As Darren Aronofsky's films are. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, the people in it, they're just so good. Not just, like, the, you know, take the dancing out of it, but, you know, they really get into their characters and just, whew, I love it. <laughs> there you go. And this is just Blu-ray. There's no... um there's no digital... Oh, wait. Yeah, there's a digital copy of there it. There is. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. <laughs> but it's weird because it's a digital copy disc, plus there's this... It's like a QR code. Oh, option one, PC or Mac. Option two, pocket blue for portable devices. There you go. Good to know. So, I again, I don't know if that's going to work. And it's cool just interesting because it doesn't here. show... Got some cool artwork on the uh, inside too. Let's pop this out right here. That oh, it does. Like... I didn't okay. notice that. Stop looking at me, Swan. There you go. So I don't. The reason that I didn't think that it had those is because it doesn't state it on the front. So I didn't realize till opening it that it had it. So I bought it thinking it was just the Blu-ray. So right. bonus for me, I guess. Bonus don't know bonus. if I don't know if the. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if the code will work, so I guess we'll see, but yes. still pretty cool. So, uh, that was our pawn shop trip. It was very uh, fruitful. Uh, it was a nice harvest at the pawn shop. And uh, then we went to the library because our library has a store in which they sell stuff for 50 cents a piece. No matter what it is, 50 cents. Books, um, movies, yeah. all sorts of they stuff. They don't have a huge selection of movies. Uh, but they have a ton of books in there and stuff like that. Uh, but they did have a few movies in there that we decided to grab. Uh, I have no idea what this movie is outside of what I read on the back of it. I've never heard of it before, uh, but it has a pretty decent cast. It's called The Lobster. And the premise is basically this guy has to find a lover before a certain amount of time or they turn him into a lobster. So it's kind of like The Little Mermaid, but different. I guess. <laughs> but it's got John C. Riley in it, and he's one of my favorite actors of all time. 
Uh, so this was a good buy here, even though I don't know if I'll like it or not. Uh, for 50 cents, for though, 50 it was cents, a good gamble. Yeah, for 50 cent DVD, I can get rid of it somehow. Um, but yeah, there's that. And then I also saw this, which I don't remember really. I kind of do. I kind of remember the whole Steven Spielberg Presents. But this ran on Sci-Fi back in 2002. It was a series. It was like a 10-part series. Um, it's taken um, on DVD. And it's got this kind of cool, shiny... Um, box set deal going on and if you open it up here unfold it it's got like the families that are involved in it and it unfold it even more there's discs ahoy so just very cool i don't you want to open it all the way Ooh. there you go just 50 cents like yeah. i i decided like 50 cents why not take a shot and watch it and see if i like it um, I looked on IMDb and, and it's got a pretty good rating. So <laughs> yeah, it's got a pretty good rating. Um, it's about alien abductions over several generations. Um, yeah, conspiracies. That's right up my alley. I hear that it's kind of one of those things that it's um, kind of veiled by a, this premise. It's more of a kind of like a family heartwarming tale type of th deal. Very Spielberg ish. Um, and I'm not uh, the huge, uh, the biggest fan of Spielberg, uh, but you know, he didn't do it. He just presented it. So there it is. 50 cents. Why not? We, because our library does the 50 cent thing, we try to always make it so that we're at a dollar. So we either find two things or if we find three things, we have to find a fourth thing just because it's a lot easier. We try not to carry change around. So yeah. night at the museum. I think it's a cute movie. I don't know if our son has seen it or not, but if not, it'll be a good movie to watch with him. And then I know that there are, are two other ones, at least one if not two um, sequels to this that we could you know, eventually add to, but 50 cents, not bad, so we went ahead and picked this up. And because it's a library, they have mostly books, we have... <laughs> Imagine that. I know. <laughs> Shocker. Um, I meant inside the store. They have mostly books with just some of the movies. They also have, like, CDs. They had Harry Potter and the Chamber, Chamber of, of Secrets, Secrets on cassette tape. Yeah. Like, audio with one of them on cassette missing. tape. One of the, yeah. One, <laughs> one of the six was missing. Yeah, like, one so. of the random ones. Like, tape number four is missing. <laughs> so, you know, that's interesting. But... We pick up books there, and the last trip that we went on, we picked up the first five Harry Potter books in hardback for our son. I'm a Harry Potter fan. I have all of them in hardback. I also have a special edition paperback set, yeah. but... She was like, well, I already have them, but then I was like, you're very partial to those books. It's probably a good idea if he has his own set. That way, if he, for some reason, mistreats it or, you know, tears a page or something like that, we don't have a meltdown in the house over Harry Potter books. So So we got five books for $2.50. Yeah, and the coolest thing is they were all first editions. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a heck of a deal right there. And, um, you know, I'm not a Harry Potter fan at all, but he seems to like them quite a bit. He read the first. He read through the first one already, and uh, he seemed to remember almost all of it. Um, but yeah, so the, I figured that would be a good idea. And even if he didn't like him for some reason, it was two dollars fifty cents. We can get way more than two dollars and fifty cents for him. So it was a very. It was no risk at all. In in fact, yeah, really so, not. Yeah. So and then he picked up a Guinness World Records two thousand eleven <laughs> yeah. book. Like, it was dude, random. realize he that, you know... Yeah, he doesn't care. Those just are like, not current anymore. He just finds the stuff interesting, so... Whatever. Yeah, like, he was trying to show us the world's smallest man, and... Right. Like, okay. Yeah. Um, and then I picked up a couple of other books that... I've never read any of them, but they looked good. Uh, the Chemist by Stephanie Meyer. Now, she wrote the Twilight books, which... I've read them. I'm not a huge fan, but her other book that she wrote first, The Host, really like that. I like the movie that they made of it, so I'm kind of hoping that this 
might be kind of along the lines of the host and be good. So we'll see. This, based on the description, it's kind of a post-apocalyptic thing, which is right up my alley. So we'll see if it's any good. And then this is the, you know, cheese stuff here. Make sure I don't have it over there. Yeah. No, I'm missing the other one, though. Um, Pretty Little Liars. They started as books, and then ABC Family made a TV show of it. And I saw that they had a stack of the books a couple um, trips ago. So I picked up a couple, and then they just had another one. So I thought I had the first three, but I'm only seeing two on the shelf over there. And this is book four, so I'm out of order. But again, 50 cents, not bad. Yeah. And we don't have plans necessarily to make this pawn shop thing a super regular occurrence, but we totally could. We ended up with today's trip. We bought... We paid for 10 movies because they do offer kids a free movie, which is kind of a cute thing that they do. So we walked out with 11 movies for $30 plus tax. Yeah. So we paid $32.25 for 11 movies. And my thought was actually 12 because The Matrix had two movies in there, but no. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> the the fact is, at $3 a piece, these... These are really good deals, um, and again, it doesn't matter when the Blu-ray came out. It could be a 2017 release, and you'll get it for three bucks. So, um, awesome deals, and I want to continue to support them with those prices, so long as they don't raise them. Um, and it it could be like a thing where maybe we we go every week, like every certain day, and we each get one, and yeah, that even that would just be like that will help us grow our collection, right? And they'd be like renting movies <laughs> so i mean at that point uh, you know basically nine bucks a week or whatever um that would be around what we paid today for our big blowout that we kind of went nuts over um you know and, and they, they they'll get new blu-rays and all that kind of stuff as we go along so we'll i mean we'll see i don't know if there were too many i okay i can't say that because if you just said, just go in there and grab all the ones you want, then I'd probably come out with a huge, huge stack. I mean, they, their Would selection you know, was... because you were really, really... I was like... being picky. Like, I, I, I want to be picky because I knew... Like, I want to get some stuff... I, I guess I wanted to mix it up. I want to get some things I've never seen before. I wanted to get some things I know were going to look good. I wanted to get some things that, you know, I could start building a collection off of, like the Alien films... Um, so I was trying to be picky in that sense. There were a lot of Blu-rays in there that we already have DVDs of and we want to upgrade. But at that point, it's kind of like if the DVD and the Blu-ray have the same features and the only thing I'm getting is a slightly upgraded picture, is I'm not going to, I'm not going to jump to replace that DVD. I'll, I'll eventually do it for sure. Cause we can then sell the DVD wherever. Um, and you know, probably two bucks for the DVD <laughs> And get out with one dollar for the Blu-ray, but our cat, our cat's starting to meow now, so we gotta wrap this up. But your final I was thoughts? gonna say we're already kind of doing that. We had Napoleon Dynamite yeah. on DVD, and we got the Blu-ray for a pretty good deal. Right. Same with Anchorman. So you know we already have some of that, and uh, we haven't really talked about what we're going to do. But another thing I can see about being cautious is we are running out of space for storing these. So we do have plans to get a better yeah, shelving system just... for these. Um, so that's another thing is we do have to be slightly cautious, I guess, on how much we buy and when because we have not yet upgraded our storage. Right, exactly. So we just don't want them to start piling up in random places. And Because uh, they already were. We were going yeah. through and creating a list of our collection and it's like, oh, wait, here's more. Oh, but I found this pile here and there's <laughs> right. some over here. Yeah. So... We're already doing We want to get that. them all in one location. I want to sort them by genre. So, yeah. I'm an alphabetical person. Throw it alphabetically. You know where it is regardless of genre. No, but I, like if you think about it, if you go on the streaming sites, they're not sorted by alphabetical order. They're sorted by genre. Because you're in, a certain, you're in a certain mood. It's like, I'm in the mood to watch horror, so I'm going to go through the horror section. I just go to search and I type it in. What if you're browsing, though? I kind of miss that um, roulette feature. 
Nobody misses that feature. I do. So, uh, yeah, our movies here, the movies that we got, the, the haul, if you will, a beastly haul indeed. Uh, it'll take us a while to go through all these movies and watch them. Um, so these, these will keep us busy for a while. But you guys should check out your local thrift stores, pawn shops, anything like that. Dollar General. Area. Yeah. Places that you wouldn't think we even went into our local Dollar Tree because they have DVDs. There yeah. weren't any that we found interesting, but they were there for a dollar. Yes. So check out places that you wouldn't think would have DVDs or Blu-rays because yeah. they might surprise you. Facebook as well. Uh, people selling mm -hmm. 3 or $4 Blu-rays on there too. So there's lots of deals out there to be had um, if you're starting to collect. Uh, then we highly suggest, you know, just kind of keeping cool and searching for the best deal because you want to get the most bang for your buck. Because a lot of these movies, I mean, we watch them once and then we never watch them again or whatever. You don't want to be spending $15 on a movie you watch once and never again. So make sure you get those deals. Until next time, subscribe to the channel for more film talk. Let us know if you have a channel down in the comments. I'm Lex, this is Latasha, and we will see you guys next time.